moment in my life. I'm the critic of a bill which I can't be a critic of. So I'll try my best to tell you the best story I can invoke as to why this piece of legislation before us is worthy of our consideration and support. Honorable Senators, I rise today to speak to Bill C-228, the Pension Plan Protection Act. Although the bill does deal with the complex and confusing often had to describe subject of bankruptcy law, fundamentally it's about something that everyone in this chamber can easily understand and want not only for themselves, but for their children and grandchildren to retire with. Simply, people wanted and deserved dignified and respectful retirement. This is what this bill is all about. It ensures that people's dignity and respect are kept at the back of the line, but instead will be placed at the front of the line in bankruptcy when their pension plans fund is not fully funded. Senators, we all have heard about the devastating stories of pensioners that work their lives for companies like Nortel, Sears Canada, White Birch, on a promise that they would be, have security in their retirement, only to find that the security were replaced by fear, anxiety, and uncertainty when their company faced bankruptcy and their pensions was not fully funded. Since 1982, more than 250,000 seniors have suffered pension losses when their company unfunded their pension and went bankrupt. The current bankruptcy laws uh, kept a quarter of a million pensioners at the back of the line when their company went into bankruptcy. C228 will change the status quo and put workers and pensioners first in the line when a company goes bankrupt. Today I want to talk about why, colleagues, we should support this bill. This is to ensure retirees can live with dignity and respect they have earned and deserve in their retirement. Senator, let me start with some context for this bill. ct 2 deals with employer-sponsored pension plan, particularly defined benefit. Data shows there are currently some 1.2 million Canadians in private sector defined benefit plans, and it is estimated that 2.8 million retirees have the same. Employer-sponsored pension plan are part of the collective bargaining process and agreement between employees and employer. They are negotiated and agreed to in the same way as wages. Workers will often agree to lower wages, increase preferred that the money goes into the pension plan to provide a more secure security for their retirement. What does that mean? In essence, pension are deferred wages. Rather than being paid immediately, they are earned while working and payable upon retirement. Fundamentally, an employer-sponsored pension plan is a promise a promise made between the employer and their employees. The employees commit to work to help their company succeed and grow, and the company today, uh, today for the financial retirement security of, for, of tomorrow. The employer, in return, promised to fully fund the pen, their pension commitment. This is what is expected of each party. No less, no more. Senators, I want to be clear that employee pension plan benefits are negotiated and earned, they are not a charitable handout. Employees negotiate and agree to have part of their wages being deferred to enjoy a better and a more secure retirement. A retirement with dignity, that is the deal. For retirees, the bankrupt of their former employers whose pensions are underfunded can have dire consequences, not for a month or a year, but for the rest of their lives, as we have seen in past bankruptcies of other companies. It means that the fixed income is reduced and will be more difficult to pay for their necessities of life. Pensioners have had to sell their homes, their cars, or have their hand, had to choose uh, between groceries or putting oil in their furnace and medication, or even going back to work in a very, very late stage in their life, despite the fact they had planned for their retirement. So what will the amendments to uh, propose in C228 do to help protect pensioners' retirement security? This bill gives employer-sponsored pension plan a, a super priority in the case of bankruptcy and insolvency. That means when a company goes bankrupt or seeks to restructure under the Company's Creditors Arrangement Act, 
Pension plan deficit will go to the front of the line ahead of the secure creditors when funds are distributed. The goal of the bill is to protect pensions of retirees of companies that end up in insolvency, like General Chemicals, Eaton's, and Atlantic Co-op. In those cases, there was not enough money left in the pension fund to pay all of the liabilities because the pension plans are unsecured creditors under current bankruptcy law. Pensioners are left to take a very painful cut in their retirement income. Critic of the bill says giving super priority to pensioners ahead of secured creditors like, like banks will have a negative effect on lending, either preventing companies from getting loans or increasing the cost of loans. Here is the truth. Secure creditors make informed investment decision and adjust the terms of loan based on the risk investment every day. That's what banks do. There are sophisticated lenders that can easily assess risk even when they're hard to define or measure. Workers and retirees, on the other hand, do not have some opportunities or ability to diversify risk and pension investment. Pensioners plan, pension plans are often their only savings, and they have no control over the investment. They have no option but to trust that the promise their employer make that their pension fund will be fully funded is kept. The retirement future is dependent on that trust. Unfortunately, for far too many, that trust has been broken. C228 is an insurance for workers and retirees against employers breaking the trust and devastating their retirement security. And here's another thing about super priorities and bankruptcy laws. Bankrupts Bankrup the Bankruptcy Act already provides for a series of priorities that rank ahead of unsecure and secure debt, including tax owing, Canada Pension Plan, Employment Insurance Contribution, and recently goods at up to $2,000 in salary. The banks and other secure lenders already and must factor in these super priorities when they assess risk in considering lending to a company. I am confident they have the expertise and sophistication to factoring super priority for pensioners. However, I know this is a big change that involves the complex laws. That is why it's fair compromise to allow banks and pension investment industry four years after the bill is passed to adopt before it comes into effect. The bill also requires an annual report to the Federal Regulator Pension Solvency to be tabled in the House of Commons to provide more transparency on the health of pension funds within the federal sector, because on the provincial side, of course, provincial government have that authority. Colleagues, over one million pensioners have had their retirement futures turned upside down over the last 40 years. I ask you a simple question. After a lifetime of hard work, should anybody have to struggle to make ends meet in their retirement? This bill ensures that the answer is no. Critics of the changes to the bankruptcy law in this bill would often talk about the unintended consequence. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about the unintended consequence. However, not the un unproven unintended consequence of passing C228, but the real unintended consequence of the current bankruptcy laws that will, that pre will persist if this bill is not, not passed. The unintended consequence of the status quo has resulted in some 250,000 pensioners over the last 40 years having their retirement blindsided by devastating effects because their former employer went up to, into bankruptcy and the deficit in their pension fund was at the back of the line when it came to trying to recoup the money that it was owed. I know the former employees of Sears, Eaton's, Caterpillar, Atlantic Co-op truly felt and had to live their remaining years with the unintended consequence of the current bankruptcy law. Imagine dedicating your working life to one company for more than 27 years only to find out you're out of a job, and you wouldn't be getting the full, your full pensions you have paid into all your life. 
Is that fair? That was the reality that was faced by 62-year-old Gail Paul of Cornerbrook, Newfoundland, and more than 17,000 of Sears workers across Canada who were either close to retirement or already retired, who lost almost 20% of their pension income for the rest of their lives. That's what they had to face with when their company went bankrupt, because they were unsecured creditors, and the bankrupt asset of their company was not going to go to fund their pension plan because they were not a priority of previous government and our legislators at the federal level. Senators, the pensioners of companies like Wabush Mines, Domingo, Smoky River Coal, or other companies whose pension plans are slashed are real people. You know them. They're friends, they're neighbors, they're even family members that we live with who face real hardship because of the current bankruptcy laws in our country. I ask you that you hear their stories because they have had a lot to say about the unintended consequence of not adopting and passing this bill. If C228 had been the law, many of these retirees would have had a dignified and respectful retirement. That is what is possible if we pass this bill. Colleagues, before I conclude, I want to acknowledge, of course, the activists and advocates who have worked relentlessly and tirelessly over the last two decades fighting to make amendments to the proposed C-28 a reality. One of them is standing before you today. I want to first start with the parliamentarians who began proposing private members' bill and public bills going back some 15 years. They forced a path eventually that led MP Marilyn Gladue, working with all parties in the other place to achieve a unanimous support to pass the bill last month in the other place. I also want to recognize the labor groups such as the United States Workers, Unifor, the Canadian Labor Congress, who have fought for this day to come, only for their pensioners, but for the members who will one day rely on their pension retirement. And finally, I want to recognize, they were here yesterday, the Penn Financial Advocacy Group, who have never given up fighting for fairness and justice. They have fought not only for the benefit to benefit themselves, which they will not get as a result of passing this bill, but they are fighting for the next generation of pensioners should be passed this bill. Groups such as CANH, CARP, the Canadian Federation of Pensioners, Canada Network of, for the Prevention of Elder Abuse, Russo, FDOQ, Kirk, and the National Fed uh, Pensioners Federation. I want to say a thank you to them for their hard work and their unwavering determination to change a law that put them and their families at the back of the line. In conclusion, colleagues, I want you to think about the unfairness in the current bankruptcy laws that have caused so much pain for people who only wanted to retire with dignity and respect. These men and women have worked their life expecting a secure retirement that are promised to them by their employer-sponsored pension plan. I want each of you to think about what it would be like for you and your family after working your entire life and you're retiring only to believe there are guaranteed income for you to rely on. Then you to find that your company you work for went bankrupt and your pension will be cut by 20% or more because the company pension plan is underfunded and that the pension is in deficit. Your pension savings was at the back of the line during the bankruptcy proceeding. This is the reality right now because of the current bankruptcy laws. Laws that do not protect the interests of pensioners when companies go bankrupt or reorganize. Company make promises to employees that, that they accept as being true, that they will have a guaranteed retirement income when they retire. The pension is the condition of employment that both the employer and the employees contribute to. An employer who fails to properly fund their pension plan 
is at fault the same way as an employer who fails to pay workers their agreed upon wages. Senators, we find it unacceptable that an employer will be allowed not to pay its employees wages that was earned or owed. Allowing companies not to pay deferred wages should be equally unacceptable. You will hear from the critics of this bill who will talk about the potential unintended consequence. I want you to remember the unintended consequence of the current law are already known and all too well by pensioners whose dignity and respect have been placed at the back of the line for far too long. Colleagues, a lifetime of work should not have, should not leave someone faced with insecurity and poverty in retirement because of an unjust law in this great land of ours. This bill can change that. I urge you to support it to get it to committee. We will hear the witnesses and more importantly, we'll come back for you for a final vote and I'm hoping after decades of history, we can finally write the law in a way it was intended to ensure that workers can have dignity and company can, 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 can continue to be successful and contribute to this great land of ours. Thank you so much.